So thank you for coming. Last week we talked about happiness and how that's actually really, like the joy of the Lord is really key, is really important. The joy of the Lord actually is your strength. If, if you're feeling weak, if you're feeling down, like uh, you just need to let the joy of the Lord do what it was intended to do. The joy of the Lord is meant to be your strength. And we, we close with the scripture, Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the key to, the key to just really being filled with the joy of the Lord is simply just trusting in him, just trusting in him and allowing his joy to overflow in you so that you're going to be, you're going to be overflowing with hope. Now, it's important to realize that you, each of us, me, you, everybody in this room, everybody who's a believer, everybody who's been born again, you actually carry with you the hope of the nations. You actually have, and if you're, if you're a born-again believer, most of us believe this. We say, yeah, Christ lives on the inside of me. But literally, Christ lives on the inside of you. <laughs> this, think about that. Just... Let's, let's think about this for a moment. Christ lives on the inside of you. Jesus, the King of glory, resides in you. I, 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 want, I want myself to get this because I have a head knowledge of it. Oh, yeah, Jesus lives in me. I'm born again. I have a head knowledge. That's, that's awesome. I need to have a heart knowledge that Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, resides in me. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of all things, lives in me. This is incredible. You know, when Solomon talked about the temple, he talked about, man, how can, how can the temple contain the glory of the Lord? We're going to build it anyway. But how can the temple, con how can you contain the glory of the Lord? But yet you do. You contain the glory of the Lord. You contain him, the just as like when Jesus was a man, he walked among us. Actually, I want that corny slide up there right now. <laughs> I want to see this slide. I love it. Okay, straight out of the grave. There's Jesus. I love this slide. You see this man right here? I, I actually believe this is a pretty good pictorial image of Jesus because he's happy. All right, he is a happy savior. I serve a very happy Jesus. I serve a very happy Savior. And yes, he's straight out of the grave. Right? He is straight out of the grave. He has defeated death. And even before that, he was happy. He was happy to come to contain himself in the body of a man, to be born of flesh and blood, just like me and you, to be born of flesh, to be fully man and fully God. He contained himself in a mortal body. And now... He's really happy to contain himself in your mortal body. But just like Jesus, the man who walked the earth 2,000 years ago, had the power of God. He was, he was fully God. He was fully man. But the power of God resided in him. And he did signs, wonders, and miracles. And he exalted the Father. He lifted the Father up because he was the exact image of the Father. That's the same Jesus you have in you. That is the same Jesus you have in you. He has chosen in his all-powerful self to put his all power, all his power, all his being in you, in me. And that's where he is. Woo! <laughs> wow. When we put this thought in our mind and we start to renew our minds to this biblical truth, this spiritual reality, it changes the way we live. It's changed the way I live. There are certain things where I'm about to like, hey, Jesus is inside me. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yes, you don't want to do that. <laughs> we don't need to do that, Jesus. And then there are other things where I'm like, oh, you know what? That's too big for me. Oh, wait. I serve a risen Savior, and he's inside of me. Yeah, you know what? Without Christ, we are nothing. Everybody get that? Okay. Do you know that he will never leave you or forsake you? You are never without Christ. He has commissioned you to be the salt and the light to this world. He has commissioned you 
with a purpose bigger than yourself, a purpose bigger than you can imagine, a destiny beyond your natural ability, a destiny that only you can accomplish when you start to meditate on his word, when you start to renew your mind to the reality that, man, you've got the hope of nations. You have the hope of glory. You have Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, residing on the inside of you. And you know what? You're, you, if you're suffering with sickness, or you're suffering with disease, you're suffering with poverty, whatever it is that you have going on, just realize only a few inches away from that, <laughs> there's Jesus, the King of kings, and all his glory residing inside of you. And even deeper, when we go beyond that, when we start to renew our minds to the fullness of the salvation that we have, the, the richness of our inheritance in Christ, the fullness of the gospel, it's not just a hope for us, it's not just a hope for me, but it's a hope for my family, it's a hope for the people around me, it's a hope for my neighbors, it's a hope for my friends, it's a hope for everyone that comes in contact with me. It's the hope of the nations. You carry the hope of the nations inside of you. Woo, glory. This is awesome stuff. This is awesome stuff. And if we can just start to renew our minds to this and realize there is nothing too big for the risen Savior. There is nothing, there is nothing that can prevail against his beloved. You, you, you know, John had a really good revelation of this. I loved it. <laughs> I love the way he calls himself. The, or the, the, uh, the, the uh, disciple that Jesus loved. <laughs> you know? Man, you need to start calling yourself that. I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. Yeah, you are, because he lives inside of you. He's taken up residence in you. This is a scripture for today. Colossians, we're going to start in Colossians 1, verse 13. Mm. I'm not going to preach until I... I'm going to contain myself, I'm going to contain my enthusiasm, and I'm going to get to the verse that I want, but I have to read it in context so you guys can see where this is going. And to see where it's going, you have to see where it's coming from. Whew. Now we're talking about happiness, we're talking about joy. I'm going to read you these verses, and I want you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you, and let him give you the joy of these verses. Let him renew your mind to the truth of these verses. All right. Colossians 1, verse 13. <clears throat> the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. Woo. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood, shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and you were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel this is the gospel that you heard and that you have been proclaimed to every creature under heaven in which i paul have become a servant how now i rejoice in what i in, in what i am suffering for you and i fill up in my in and i fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regards to christ's afflictions for his sake for the sake of his body which is the church I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. Here we go. This is it. The mystery that has been kept hidden from ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles from the, the glorious riches of this mystery, 
which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone full, fully mature in Christ. To this end, I, have strain, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Woo! Verse 26, the mystery has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but now is disclosed in you. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the mystery of the new covenant, the things of the Old Testament that were prophesied about, the things that the, 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 the God's people in the Old Testament, they could not fathom how this was all going to come together. They could not fathom. They could not fathom the mystery of Christ. And then he showed up, and they still didn't get it. And now we've got him on the inside of us, and we're still not getting it. <laughs> I'm just letting you know the truth. Man, when we start to live like we got it, even if we get it a little bit, the more you get it, the more you're going to live like you got it. The more happiness is going to flow in your life, the more overflow you're going to have, and the more confidence you have in what the Lord's put in front of you to deal with and to handle, because He has poured His goodness, He has poured His glory into you. It's Christ Jesus. This is the mystery of all ages. He has revealed it in you. It's the hope of glory. So when the people around you see you, what are they seeing? They're seeing Jesus. For real. This is the plan. People, I figured it out. This is the plan. We're supposed to look like Jesus. <laughs> Not just here on Sundays, but all the time. All the time. Eric, Erica said on Facebook, what, your life is your mission trip, right? Your life is your mission trip. This is it. Like, this isn't dress rehearsal. Like, right now, we're, 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 we're in practice. It's like we're out on a football field. We're getting ready, you know, we're doing warm-up here, going through the playbook, going through the playbook. Hey, put that play up on the screen. I like that. Um, the kings in, in the church. You guys have seen this before? All right. Church equals the kingdom, all right? This is the church, persecuted and effective, a remnant, and we're waiting to get rescued. All right, go to the next slide. This is really the church, okay? This is really the church. We're equipping the kings to expand the kingdom. We're equipping the kings to expand the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the hope of glory that you carry in you. It's what the world wants. It's what the world needs. People love Jesus. The one thing they can't stand is religion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. People love Jesus. People love Jesus. You know, who did, you, who did Jesus hang out with when he came? He hung out with all, all the religious people. Wait, sinners? What? No. Not my Jesus. He was too holy for that, wasn't he? He didn't hang out with prostitutes and people like that. No, he did, actually. I think, now that I think about it, he actually did. And they loved him because he brought, him, he brought them grace. He spoke the truth to them, but he spoke it out of love. He spoke it out of grace. He said, I love you. So here's what he led. Imagine this. The God who is love, who came because of love, actually led with love. He was anointed with joy above his fellows. He had the joy of the Lord, and he brought truth but he brought it with love. Because if you're bringing the truth without love, man, that's what you sound like. That's not good. <laughs> okay? That's not, that's ugly. <laughs> I'm not going to make it on a worship team with this. Yeah. You know? That's, that's ugly. A, a big clanging sound. You're going to get some people's attention. You're going to get their attention. You're going to get the world's attention, and they're going to say, well, what do you know? There's another better than me Christian out there. Well, what do you know? There's another person preaching religion. And when I say religion, you guys get what I'm talking about. I'm not saying I love Christianity is not pure, pure, the pure gospel Christianity is not religion. Religion is man's best attempt to get close to God. Jesus is God getting close to man. All right? 
Christianity is pure Christianity. The gospel message of Christianity is not about what you can do to gain your holiness. It's about the holiness he has given you because of his shed blood on the cross. This is the message we have to preach. We have to preach a message, of, a message that brings people into the kingdom. It brings them salvation. It brings them the hope of glory. They look at you and they see the same Jesus that Mary Magdalene saw. Can you, I, I just, this blows my mind. Whew. It just blows my mind. I picture Jesus. He's sitting at the table. Man, he's just sitting there, and he's actually at a religious person's house. He's sitting there having dinner. And I, I don't think he sat in a chair like this, but just go with me here. <laughs> sitting there having dinner, and here comes a prostitute. And she starts to wash his feet with her hair. Whew, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. And he, she's kissing his feet. The tears are falling out of her eyes. She's literally washing the feet of Jesus with her tears and her hair. What does Jesus do? He doesn't freak out and say, oh my gosh, what are these people going to think of me? The prostitute's touching my feet. This lady's a sinner. Ah, she's going to ruin my ministry. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to ruin my ministry. Giving might go down. I don't know if people are going to come back next Sunday. She's washing his feet with her hair and her tears. And the, the religious guys are sitting there looking and saying, wow. Jesus is so far off. If he only knew this woman was a prostitute, he obviously is completely clueless because nobody who's claiming to be anybody important in our religious circles would associate with a sinner, much less wash her, let her, let her touch her feet and wash her, your feet with her hair and tears. Picture that. I mean, it's a beautiful picture, but the, get the whole picture. What is Jesus saying? And then he, and then he's, he knows their thoughts because he's Jesus. He's Jesus. He knows what they're thinking. And he says, <laughs> a little bad paraphrase on my part, but he basically says, you know what? The one who's forgiven much loves much. She, she gets it. You don't. She gets it. You don't. And, th and that's it. That's it. There's so many people and I am not trying to preach condemnation to anybody this morning. I need you to hear this. Condemnation is religion and it kills. Condemnation kills. Mm. Jesus has taken, your, he has taken your condemnation. He has taken your guilt. You get grace. You, get, you don't get what you deserve. You get grace. You get mercy, which means you don't get what you deserve. But you get grace, which means you get what he deserves. Okay? I am not preaching condemnation to anybody here or anybody watching this. But there are so many of us myself included, who would be at that table with Jesus and say, whoa, Jesus, what are you doing? Don't you know who she is? Man, get a picture of that grace. Get a picture of that mercy. That's the grace and mercy that's inside of you. That's the grace and mercy that's inside you. That's the grace and mercy that's willing to overlook the obvious faults in someone because you know what? People know they're screwed up. People know it. I knew it when I was screwed up. I'm still I'm in process. <laughs> We're all in process. But man, when I was really screwed up, you didn't have to tell me. In fact, I remember one time somebody did tell me, and I was ready to punch him in the face. <laughs> really? You think I'm screwed up? Wait till you go to the doctor. He'll tell you how screwed up you are. Being honest, they didn't minister to me. Oh, you're right, brother. I'm really screwed up. Thank you for sharing the truth with me. I'm going to repent. Really? Who are you? That's what my attitude was. Who are you? You're as screwed up as I am. You, you got an answer that I need? Why don't you show it to me instead of telling me about it? Honestly, you got an answer that I need? Why don't you show it to me instead of telling me about it? That's what, these, that's what the people want. They, want. they don't want to be told another answer. They don't want to be told, you need to repent from your sins and turn to Jesus. Because you're a dirty, rotten sinner, and you're going to hell. I did my gospel message for the day. Okay, gospel is good news. 
good news is delivered much better when someone is happy, makes it believable. You're going to hell, dirty, rotten sinner. Better, but still not very good. All right. They need someone to demonstrate love to them, demonstrate mercy to them. They don't need someone who's going to tell them to do the impossible. Oh, you're in bondage. Oh, you're, you're oppressed. You're depressed. You're, you're stuck in a bad situation that you can't get out of with your own power. Well, I got some good news for you. All you have to do is clean yourself up and come to Jesus, and I'll take you to church with me on Sunday. That's not the message that we've got. We come in with the grace and the love and the mercy of God. When they come to Jesus, when I'm walking towards destruction and sin, it's in front of me. There's, there's hell in front of me. I am walking this way. I am believing in myself as my highest power. I am trusting in my own goodness and mercy to deliver me from the place I'm about to step into, or I completely don't have any hope to be delivered from hell anyway. What does repentance look like? Turning to Jesus. I turned from believing in myself, the one sin that the Holy Spirit cannot forgive, is denying his witness that you need a Savior. The one sin that cannot be forgiven is denying Jesus. When you turn to Christ, who has forgiven all of your sins, he has forgiven them all already, you accept this amazing gift of salvation that he has given you, the grace he has extended to you. He gives you the power through the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome your sin. That's when you get the power of God to walk away. When, when Jesus ministered to the prostitute and the men were about to stone her, he said, your, your sins are forgiven. He extended, he extended salvation to her. And he said, go and sin no more. He didn't say, go and sin no more, and then I'll give you salvation. <laughs> okay? She knew. He said, your sins are forgiven. Salvation comes. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power to be regenerated. When you, I want the functional diagram, <laughs> the three-circle slide. All right. When you get born again in your spirit, the moment you turn to Christ, the moment you say, Jesus, I believe you are who you said you are. I need a Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I accept you into my heart. The moment you say that, you are born again in your spirit. You are renewed. You have, you have, you have put your trust in a Savior. You have accepted the free gift of grace that he has extended to you. Now, you've still got this body and this soul that's surrounding it. When we get born again, when we, when we step into salvation, when we accept what God has done 2,000 years ago, we step into salvation. In our, in our spirit, we are born again. You are perfect and holy. Christ is in union with you, for real. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, he is there with you in your spirit, inside of you, for real. I'm just saying, man, this is real. This is really... This is not just words on a, in a book. This is truth. Spiritual truth always trumps physical reality. But you know what? In your spirit, you're still, you're still in this physical reality. You still have a mind. You still have emotions. You still have a spirit. You still have a body. And that's when you begin your Christian walk. You begin your walk. You begin renewing your mind, your actions, your attitudes. Some of them are going to instantly drop off. Some of them are instantly going to be changed. Some of them are instantly going to, bam, wow. You're going to get, you have an opportunity to get delivered from addictions, from things that have plagued you your entire life. Holy Spirit can come. He's going to deliver you. He's going to set you free. He's going to set your mind free. He's going to set your body free. But there's going to be other things. There's going to be other things. There's other behaviors. There's going to be habits. There's going to be things that you're going to grow in as you grow in these things by the power of the Holy Spirit helping you renew your mind to the word of God. Transformation is going to come, and it's going to come to your spirit, it's going to come to your body, and it's going to come to that natural world around you. And that's when the people around you begin to get transformed. They begin, they begin to see the difference in your attitude. They begin to see the difference in things that are, were on the inside of you are not there anymore. That's when we begin to see the salt and the light. We're meant to be salt and light. 
We are meant to be salt and light to this world around us. Salt does not stay in the salt shaker. I don't shine my light at the sky, at the sun, and say, hey, light, light's light. It's all going to hang out together. You shine your light in the darkness. When Jesus was sitting there, and the woman is washing his feet with her hair and her tears, that was light shining in the darkness. That was salt, salting the, the world around it. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be salt, and we're called to be light. Jesus Christ, the hope in you, the hope of glory in you, in you, transforming you, transforming you, transforming your spirit instantly, transforming your mind, your emotions as you renew it, transforming your body as you renew it, transforming the natural world around you. This is it. This is it. This is the gospel. This is the truth. It's not just about getting people born again and, and planting them somewhere in a church or just getting them born again and having them fill out, hey, I see that hand back there. All right. Awesome job, guys. We got some people saved. Woohoo! No. It's not. This is about transformation. Transformation. Individual transformation leads to corporate transformation. Individual breakthrough leads to societal breakthrough. This is about transforming. This is about being the hope of the nations. That's us. We literally have Jesus Christ on the inside of us. He is the hope of the nations. You carry the hope of the nations in you. You carry the hope of your friends in you. You carry the hope of your family in you. You carry the hope of your employees in you. You carry the hope of your boss in you. You carry the hope of your spouse and your children and your parents. It's in you. Yeah, that hope that everybody wants, it's in you. Yes, it is. You are the hope of the nations. Christ in you forever in union with you because he will never leave you or forsake you. Man. And all we have to do is present him by being us, by being confident in what the word says about us, by being confident in this gospel message that he has preached, that we confidently walk in this grace, the grace that Christ demonstrated to the woman washing his feet, that's the same Jesus that's inside of you. That's the grace he wants you to walk in for yourself, and that's the grace he wants you to walk in for others. Yes, you know what? Are we going to see people's lives transformed? Are we going to see people going from prostitutes to being the most amazing co contributors with families and people around them that they're ministering to and, and leading all kinds of wonderful things in this world, leading societal change. Yes, we're going to see that. Of course we're going to see that. But we don't say, clean yourself up first, and then we can take you to church. Well, then we'll take you to Jesus. No. And just like that, that's the same gospel. That's the same grace you have to have to your, to your family and to your friends, to your coworkers, to your peers. Extend the grace and the mercy that the Lord has shown you. He has given it to you freely. Extend that to the people around you. You don't have to worry about cleaning them up before you bring them to Jesus. You know, when the disciples were fishing, they were fishing all night, and Jesus says, and, and they're coming in, and there's Jesus on the shore, and they're like, he's just like, throw your net over there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? He said, throw your net over there. And, and I think it was Peter's like, ah, we've been fishing all night long. But since you told us to, we're just going to do what you said. But we already know that we're not going to catch anything. No. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were fishermen. They were professionals. You know, you're a professional. You're a professional, whatever you do. If you, if you get paid to something, you're, you're a professional. Sometimes Jesus is going to tell you to do something that you're going to go like, huh, well, that doesn't make any sense, Jesus. Just listen to him. Just listen to him. He's got a harvest for you. He's got a harvest that he wants you to partake in. He wants you to bring, help him bring in this harvest to the kingdom. Help him expand the kingdom. We had that slide up there. Expanding the kingdom. Bringing the hope of the nations to the nation. This is something for us to be excited about. Cindy, if you guys want to come up here, that would be awesome. Um, I'm just going to close right now with a prayer. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Father God, we thank you. Mm. 
We thank you for making the mystery known to us and through us to this world. And I ask right now in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the riches of this glory, this mystery, this mystery of Jesus in us, the hope of the nations, this good news gospel, this message of grace and mercy, I just ask the, the glorious riches of this message be made manifest in our hearts and our minds. I just ask for a hunger to understand your mercy, to understand your grace in a whole new way, to carry your love, to carry your grace, to carry your mercy in a whole new way, to get, as your word says, the glorious riches of this mystery in our hearts and our minds. Because Jesus, you are the hope of glory, not just for us, but for the entire world, to those around us, to the people that we know and love and to people that we haven't even met yet. So Father, I just ask that you just increase our hunger. Increase our hunger to understand and to to step into this gospel, to step into this message of grace with a new passion and a new desire to represent you well, Lord, to represent the risen Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords to represent the glorious riches that you have. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if there's anybody, if there's anybody watching this, if there's anybody sitting here right now, and you've never taken the opportunity to answer and to accept what Christ is extending to you, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ forgave you of your sins. And all you have to do is accept this free gift of salvation. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I call upon your name, Lord. I thank you for this salvation. That's what scripture says. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Just invite Jesus into your heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for for releasing your goodness into my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, that's how you begin your walk into Christianity. That's how you step into the good news. That's how you step into being born again. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you regenerate your life. He's going to renew your mind to who you are in him. I encourage you to plug into a church that preaches the gospel. Plug into a church that believes in the good news of Jesus Christ. Now for everybody else, I just want you to take a moment and just ask the Lord in your own words to say, Lord, reveal to me these glorious riches of your grace in a deeper way. Just take a couple minutes. Just meditate on that. Just take a couple minutes. Let him reveal to you the glorious riches of his grace and his mercy in your life. When you start to get a glimpse of the grace and the mercy, how rich it is that God has extended to you, you can't help but extend it to other people. The more you know about Jesus in your life, the more you reflect him on the outside. He radiates out of you. So, Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you for this awesome day, Lord. I thank you for making us a body and being our head, Lord. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I just release your people today. Just thank you for the blessing that you've poured into your life. You guys are dismissed, but I encourage you, just take a few minutes, reflect on what the Lord is saying to you right now.